Hi. My name is Amirul. Hi, my name is Muhammad Akmal. Hi, my name is Ahmad Zaki. Hi, my name is Zura. Hey there, I'm Atika. And now we are going to learn about... Passive. Why are you fighting? <laughs> Sister. Woo! The function of emergency lighting is to illuminate key area in case of emergency. So, let's watch the next video. Hi, I'm Aaron from the Safe Mission team, here to talk to you about how to test emergency lighting and why we do this. We test it on a monthly basis to make sure that it works properly in between servicing visits. They look like this, they look like this, they look like this, and they look like this. Emergency lights are basically just a light that has a battery backup. Under normal conditions, like now, electricity is going into the emergency light and going into the battery, and that's powering the light and charging the battery. In an emergency situation, the power would be cut and the battery would be activated, and that's how they work. All emergency lights have an LED on them. This is there to indicate whether or not there's power going to the light and the battery is charging. Under normal situations, this light should be on. If you're looking around your building and you see this light is not on, you know there's a problem with the battery or the light itself. Emergency lights are there to light up which way you should go if there's a fire and a power cut. That's why you'll often find that they have a sign inbuilt on them depending on what part of the building that they're found in. Non-maintained lights are exactly the same except under normal conditions they stay off and they only come on if there's a power cut. There are two options for testing emergency lighting. The first one that we're going to talk about is this one here. Throughout your building, you may have lots of sockets on the wall and keys like this. So the idea being, put the key into the socket and it's just like a light switch. You just click it into test mode and that will simulate the power being cut to the emergency light. Check that all of the emergency lights in that area have come on and then when you finish checking this, click it back into normal mode. The second option of testing emergency lighting in the building is to go to your electrical distribution board or your power supply or your trip switches like we have done here and then to look which circuits relate to lighting and just to turn them off. It has the same effect as the other method. Let me show you. Once you've checked them all, just turn them back on. If your distribution board or your switches aren't labelled, like they are here, then you can ask your servicing engineer when they come to service your emergency lighting or an electrician when they come to do work on the electrical distribution board or power supply to label them for you. Function of fire door is to prevent spread of smoke and fire. So, in this video, show our group members Putri and Akmal checking out the fire door. A was glazed incorrectly using toughened safety glass and with no intumescent seals in its glazing system. The intumescent smoke seals around the door were fitted in pieced sections rather than in continuous lengths along the two long edges and across the top. Door B was also glazed. This time, the correct fire rated glass was used and was installed using an appropriate fire door glazing system. All other components were fitted as described in the manufacturer's instructions. Door C simulated a typical fire rated entrance door installed in flats and apartments complete with an ordinary letter plate and viewer, but with no intumescent seals between the door and frame. It's a situation we often find, where letter plates are fitted without any correct fire protection or where a non-fire rated door has been installed. As the test starts, smoke begins to appear from all the doors, as the facings on the doors burns almost immediately. And after only four minutes, the glass dramatically fails and the door is engulfed in fire and smoke. Imagine if that door had been in a hotel corridor. It's now five minutes into the test and the letter plate on door C falls out. We're now approaching and then exceeding 30 minutes 
and our correctly glazed and correctly installed door is still holding back the fire, doing what it was designed and engineered to do. It's 33 minutes before this door finally gives out. The function of escape routes is to assist people to escape from fire. So, in this video, you are watching me, Akmal and Zaki are performing the standard of procedure to escape from fire by using the escape route. For fire rated partition, it can provide us vertical fire separation in structures. Fire rated ceiling function to enhance resistance against structural failure. Uh, in this little video presentation, I'm gonna show you that not all the styrofoam tiles are created equally. Uh, I'm gonna burn two tiles, one made by Styropro, sold by Talisa Decor, and the uh, other tiles that are uh, offered by our competitors. Uh, see the difference. I'll try to burn both of them and I'll start with our tile. As you can see, no matter how many times I try to burn it, as soon as I take a flame off, the, style, the tile is self-extinguishing. Uh, it's due to a special chemical additive that actually prevent the uh, flames to spread. Now, look at the other tile. As you can see, it continued to burn. All right, okay. as conclusion, passive fire system is uh, important and useful in every building. Passive fire fighting system is always active at all times to ensure the safety of occupants inside a building. The installation of passive fire protection must be based on the standard which is set by fire department. We should learn the basic of fire safety in order to create awareness to against to reduce the effect of fire. Last but not least, we can save other people's lives by spreading knowledge of the same fire system. So yeah, that's it from us. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye.